you about our work, uh, our traditional knowledge in the world that changes. The Aesnot work with the Chacobo in Bolivia as, say, a preliminary study that came out of some work we did on palms. Now, who are the Chacobo? The Chacobo are located here in the very north of Bolivia. They're a Pano-speaking group like, for example, Matis, Mates, Esejas, there are quite a few groups out there in the language, in that language group. They're all small. The Chacobo have only about 500 members. They're originally nomadic, and if I say originally nomadic, I mean at least post rubber boom. Nobody knows what happened before, say, 100 years ago. They reached their current main settlement, Alto Ivon, that little thing here, in the 1960s, encouraged by missionaries to settle down there. The Summer Institute of Linguistics uh, made their impression in that region. Good outcome, they helped the Chacobo to get about 45,000 hectares of territory. This is this area. Originally, they lived more here in the south and encouraged the tribe to start processing rubber. First, they took a botanical study happened in the 1980s. That one, however, was never completely translated into any language the Chacobo would have understood. That relates to traditional rights and so on. Some change in recent years. Now, and you'll see the map later, the Bolivian government granted the Chacobo much larger territory that represents basically their original lands. Now, what has happened in the last 20, 25 years to the Chacobo? Little impression from the village, you already see that there is still a lot of palm roots in local houses, so traditional resources are being used. And this is what Chacobo life looked like in the 1980s. Well, you see a rather conservative, uh, missionary encouraged press, a lot of plant diversity, useful plant diversity, crops huge bunch of bananas that played a big role in their diet, big array of different hunting weapons, so a whole bunch of differently called arrows for different purposes, huge array of materials that are being used in everyday culture, of course, local food processing. Uh, manioc used to be the main staple of those people. And nicely enough, we know that because we have a documentation of years ago. Now, the current territory looks much larger. The original one would be up here, so this is now the 450,000 hectares they have access to. And that has actually led to a lot of change in lifestyle. This is the original territory, so much more space. What happened? Well, first of all, you might imagine that fashion changes. Traditional dresses were abandoned in the 1960s under missionary pressure, but the conservative style has rather changed to, well, what everybody wears nowadays. So traditional clothing, well, or any use of anything that was traditional in that regard has been basically gone. If you look at food production, it looks a little different. There are still old mortars or mortars all over the place, but instead of using them to pound manioc, they are now used to pound rice. Folks have been encouraged to grow rice instead of other staples. Rice was about 10% of the diet in the 1980s, and now it's about 90%. So profound change there. So the production of yucca flour, farinha, you could say, or hebe, has basically ceased, and those clay pots are more or less decoration nowadays. Well, what about basketry? Well, there are baskets around all over the place, so one would argue Nothing has changed in the last 25 years. People have retained their knowledge, which would be rather nice. The setback here is that there are only a few older women in the villages that still know how to make baskets. So although we see resources still being used in a traditional way, this is deceiving or deceptive because <coughs> young people hardly know how to produce those things. The only original tool, you might say, that is still being used is the big pounder for yucca for um, festivities. This big throw was used to produce
use local beer that's still being used nowadays, although very frequently it's also used as toy. So it has lost certain importance because now you can buy beer at a local village store. The most profound change probably is hunting. Well, I remember all those different arrows. And the only arrow that is still used nowadays is this thing with the nail that's used for small fish. Everything else is basically gone. There's also no use of fish poisons. There is no use of arrow poisons anymore. It's much more convenient. Is that the Bikobi? That's the Bikobi. Yeah, this is the Bikobi. Everything else is gone. Uh, shotguns and 22s are much more practical, so everybody goes hunting with guns nowadays. Although it's rather expensive to buy bullets in Bolivia. If you go to neighboring Canoan groups like the Ezecha, you will still find all these arrows in a very similar way being used. Now from a plant perspective, uh, the most profound loss in knowledge are cultivars of um, Plantains, bananas, because none of those are around nowadays. Nobody actually eats a lot of bananas. There are a few Cavendish being planted around the village, but that diversity is simply gone. It has no importance whatsoever anymore in everyday life. However, what also has happened is that Chacobo went back to, you could say, a nomadic lifestyle with all their big territory coming back, people started to leave their main village during certain times. But they're still there from April to November. There's a school, there's a clinic, and so on and so on. And by the way, all Chakopo children, first of all, learn Chakopo in school. So everybody speaks local language for first years in school, and then Spanish comes in. So language is nicely preserved. As, of course, then is terminology for local crafts, for local plants, and so on and so on. But what happens with the rest of the territory? Well, rubber isn't important anymore. Nobody sells rubber anymore in the region. What's more important is new rice fields in the northern part of the territory. Then, between December and March, everybody goes to the original ancestral lands in the south to start collecting Brazil nuts, which is now actually the main trade item. And in between, folks might move to Triangulo, which happens to be close to the road that connects the main provincial capital to La Paz, and is of course a trade hub, and also closer to better fishing grounds. So the whole village is moving around during the year, and we found that out when we suddenly started seeing the same people in different places different houses and everybody said, oh yeah, we have another house over there and we live there sometimes. Which was astonishing because originally we found that the population was about a third of what the local council said and that resulted from them counting everybody in three times because everybody has a couple of houses. Now, what does, what does all that mean? Um, of course, we're planning to look a bit closer at Chacobo plant use to compare to that study that was done 25 years ago, to get an idea whether plant use knowledge is still there. Um, it seems that especially medicinal plant knowledge is pretty much gone. People go to local health outposts and nowhere else. Um, and that, of course, relates to things like language. Does it really matter that everybody learns their language when certain resources are gone? Or when certain resources are not used anymore in a traditional way. And I'll give you a good example that relates to a uh, session we have later, acai palms, in that case, we tell them like Atoria. Originally, they were used for thatch and for house posts. And all the old people talk about using acai for thatch and house posts, but none of the young guys. Young people use acai to make palm hearts for sale, and nothing else. And what about the use of acai fruits for food? Well, actually, nobody anywhere ever uses acai for food. 
Everybody uses all other palm fruits, but they leave acai alone for certain reasons. And I might ask a question when we get to the acai uh, session to that regard. Um, it's a little bit different in Brazil, but in Peru, acai is not used that much as food. But it's used as medicine against, for example, hepatitis, the roots especially. But again, old people don't know that use. This is a use that has been introduced in the last couple of years. So, very interesting subject. Um, and as I said, intellectual property involved. It's one of the cases where people have been studied and that knowledge never really got back to them. So one, one of our approaches is simply to try to translate such old studies completely into the language they understand, which we did with that 1987 study. So now they have at least a complete record in Spanish that they can translate back into Chacopo. That co coincidentally also contains all the plant names. So, so much for Bolivia, and uh, we might have time for a few questions if you have some.